So, and each and every one of us has got a diabetic gene. Okay. Whether you become a diabetic or not is up to you. Any individual is like a gun and the gene is like a bullet. If the diabetes has got to come out, you need a trigger. The trigger of the gun holds the key. If you are able to pull the trigger, become a diabetic. If you are able to hold on, you can. There is another thing known as epigenetics, something above the genes. Okay. The whole family are diabetic, grandfather di diabetic, grandmother diabetic, father, mother diabetic. The son can choose to be a diabetic or not a diabetic. You can change your genes. Contrarily, there is no family history of diabetes at all, still you can choose to become a diabetic. That is epigenetics. The most sinister thing that is happening now is that the drugs can change our genes. The drugs that have been prescribed for lifestyle diseases can change our genes comma, for the worse. All lifestyle within quotes diseases are an intelligent expression, physiological expression of the body which cannot be treated by a chemical that is drug. Because our body is self regulating and self healing. Our body is intelligent, we are stupid. Okay. So, by and large, this, that is what I am talking is type 2 diabetes, not type 1. Type 1, there is no insulin. Okay. You have to give insulin, otherwise, they will die. We are focused mainly on type 2 diabetes okay. because the cause is something different. The genesis, how diabetes occurs. Okay. Basically, it is a diabetes altered response of our body to a certain nutrient that we are taking. Now, what are the nutrients that we are taking? Carbohydrate, protein, fat. Okay. Carbohydrate is broken to sugar, protein is broken to amino acid and fat is broken into fatty acid. Right. So, the food that we take, mostly we are all South Indians. Most of us are vegetarians, barring a few. So, out of the three macronutrients, carbohydrate, protein, fat, the carbohydrate content is very, very high. Virtually 90 percent of the vegetarians' diet is carbohydrate. Now, what is carbohydrate? It is just an assembly of glucose molecules. Okay. So, whatever carbohydrate that we take, especially the processed refined carbohydrates that we take is converted to sugar in the body. What is the role of sugar to provide energy? Okay. Now, our body contains 5 liters of blood. How much of sugar in terms of the crystal sugar that we use in the kitchen do you think it will tolerate? Just 1 teaspoon, just 1 teaspoon that is 5 grams. It is very easy to calculate. The average blood sugar is 100 milligrams per deciliter. You convert into liter, it becomes 5 grams. That is 1 teaspoon of sugar. One slice of bread contains 2 and a half teaspoon of sugar. One idli may contain 2 spoons of sugar. Okay. A small cup of rice may contain 4 to 5 teaspoon of sugar. Now, you just think the amount of idlis or rice uh, sugar that you take during the course of a day okay it will be about 25 to 30 spoons easily if not more milk contains sugar you take milk okay so but the body can tolerate only one spoon of sugar so what is going to happen to the excess so this is where nature has created a situation where the pancreas, the organ pancreas has got a particular cell known as beta cell. When the sugar levels are going up, message is sent by the brain to the pancreatic beta cells to produce insulin. What is the job of this hormone insulin is that takes take the excess sugar from the blood and put it all over the body for two purposes, one for energy purposes, two for storage. Okay. 
so what are the storage i will talk about the storage there are three storages one is the liver which is here another one is the muscle and third one is the fat so whereas the liver and the muscle can store only limited amount of the sugar in the form of glycogen a substance known as a glycogen that's an assembly of glucose it is stored there but limited for example the liver is like this room you cannot stuff things beyond a particular level that's all it can hold beyond that is is just going to refuse but the unlimited source of unlimited recipient is the fat it can take any amount of sugar in the form of fat i'll tell you how sugar becomes fat later but that's the storage you can take any amount so imagine you take only carbohydrate imagine a vegetarian what protein is he going to have and what fat is he going to have nothing before that i'll let me tell you when you take carbohydrate there's a high insulin response because it's only sugar okay the insulin has got desperately take the excess sugar and shove it all over the place when you take protein there is a moderate insulin response because much of the protein is not going to be converted into sugar when you take fat there is virtually no response insulin response but the problem is 90% of the food we vegetarians or we south indians take is carbohydrate so the sugar skyrockets immediately the insulin response is there it takes all the sugar and puts it all over the place okay but then something is happening now you tie a watch on your hand at the moment you tie you are conscious subsequently glass okay people who consume cigarettes alcohol medicines after some time no you develop resistance the body develop resistance you blissfully in another the fan you take the fan you take the traffic initially you're able to hear subsequently you don't if i speak for a long time you'll stop hearing me that is resistance similarly when there's a lot of insulin being pumped into our system our cells stop responding to it before that let me tell you how the insulin is able to transport the blood from the blood stream into the cell imagine this room to be a cell it has got a door it's got a lock okay it requires energy or it wants to store whichever the blood is flowing in the corridor and it contains sugar so the sugar level goes up insulin is released it opens it's a magic key which opens the lock and allows the sugar to selectively get into the cell this is how the sugar gets into the cell either for energy purposes or for storage but then what happens when there's lot of sugar coming up and the lot of insulin coming up at one point of time the lock does not work it's some some dirt is accumulated in the lock so that doesn't open the insulin is unable to open so what the body is says still the sugars are coming thanks to a carbohydrate dumping so more insulin is being produced so the more insulin it produce the more the cell becomes resistant either for store mainly for energy purposes and for storage so meaning the liver stops accepting the muscle stops accepting the only source which keeps on accepting is our fat so this is a stage called insulin resistance so more carbohydrate is converted to more sugar to more insulin cycle goes on and on and on and you reach a stage despite there being high insulin it is unable to mobilize all the excess sugar into your system that point is called diabetes your blood sugar raises meaning you need to get yourself exposed for 10 to 15 years to high insulin to get diabetes today all complications of type 2 diabetes is caused by high insulin and high sugar until i get diabetes all my complications are caused by high insulin after i get diabetes 
all complications are produced by high insulin and high sugar so just because i got diabetes today it's not that i'll be free of complications my complications already started thanks to high insulin joseph kraft in 1976 he did this experiment he took two populations one a diabetic population two a non diabetic population so what he did he he did the what is called glucose tolerance test glucose could the you check the sugar simultaneously he checked the insulin also so in the diabetic population the sugars were high predictably and the insulin levels were also high predictably he took the non diabetic population predictably the sugar was absolutely normal but most unpredictably 75% of the non diabetic population had high insulin he said all these guys with high insulin are going to have problems they had problem even before diabetes some had problem even before diabetes came because high insulin known as insulin toxicity itself is a risk factor and all of them became diabetics so that is the that is the importance of insulin or high insulin so just because my sugars are normal please don't be complacent check your insulin levels and who are the people who should have the insulin checked children children the type of food that they take pumps insulin into the body the fruit juices the cakes the chocolates all the items that the children take because it is available parents can afford they'll bend on their backs to buy all the children all these things okay and the children know how to manipulate the parents to get all this so their levels will be very high okay i have they were not oh, oh, i'll tell you quote later one small boy he had such a high insulin first of all you need to know what the normal levels of insulin then you'll understand the magnitude of the problem okay 30% of the school going population children are obese i'm not talking about the higher socio economic strata i'm talking about people children from the housing board the lower socio economic strata you go to any school the obesity levels are high here i would like to say one thing in our general population you have two groups one is a productive population the other is a vulnerable population the productive population is between the age of 25 and say 55 they are the breadwinners they earn who are the vulnerable population young kids and the parents right now the scenario is that the pro- productive population is a population that's got to be protected they are under threat the days when the parents said the the people said my young appa heart attack on the kidney failure stroke on the now parents are telling my son is a diabetic he had a heart attack sudden death so that is good that is a scenario that is the productive population they are the future if they are vulnerable and they are you may be knowing you go to any corporate hospital see the statistics of heart attack or whatever the age is coming down where they get into major health issues the age is coming down okay so that is going to happen to this productive population who is to take care of the children and the elder that is one way of thinking the other way of thinking children 10 years 15 years they become diabetic they become obese they have high insulin level high cholesterol under functioning of thyroid okay under functioning ovary polycystic ovary menstrual disorders so what is going to happen 10 years down the line they'll be full blown full blown issues they'll have so our population is going to be decimated unless we take corrective action and certainly prescribing medicine is not the option right so this is the general background that you need to have coming back to diabetes so this is how diabetes occurs okay now i said diabetic diabetes and obesity as this vicious circle of high carbohydrate high sugar high insulin is happening this is another vicious circle that is happening normally when we take food okay the food it goes for energy purposes and storage house some goes into the fat also fat is not an innocent 
thing it is a dynamic it produces a lot of chemicals lot of hormones lot of enzymes ok one important uh, hormone that produces is known as leptin normally leptin is a hormone which goes to our brain and tells stop eating ok once the message gets to the brain we stop eating that is what happens normally when you have normal within quotes amount of fat normal insulin normal leptin message goes you stop eating now imagine you take lot of carbohydrate convert a lot of sugar high insulin high fat deposition the first vicious circle triggers what is known as insulin resistance now what happens consequent to the high fat deposition there is high leptin production when there is more and more leptin production what happens when there is more and more insulin production insulin resistance when there is more and more leptin production what happens leptin resistance so what is leptin resistance it is unable to get the message to the brain to stop eating and high insulin itself will stop the leptin message going so that is why diabetes and obesity go hand in glove so diabetes and obesity is a hormonal problem so what did you define leptin message leptin message does not go to the brain okay so i'll throw a question now a person is obese or overweight because he or she eats more and exercises less is this statement right or wrong people here know the answer but just tell me a person is obese result is due to eating more and exercising less cause cause effect is it right or wrong now you now you tell me anybody right or wrong how many people say it's right okay how many is people say otherwise okay eating more of what eating more anything so the cause effect the general perception is that you become obese because you eat more and exercise less right that's not right i said told you because a person is obese he or she is eating more and exercising less because they are leptin and insulin resistant the cause effect has to be changed in other words being obese is not a behavioral problem it is a hormonal problem it's a biochemical problem you need you you should not find fault with the individual you have to be empathetic because he is beyond himself because of the biochemical injury that he has sustained okay so this is what happens to all that's why you see people with diabetes or obese people they keep on eating the reason is very very simple whatever you eat the insulin takes it and puts it into your fat so you are always energy deficient constantly energy deficient 